It's 1917 and Spanish influenza is wreaking havoc across the globe. It's nearing the end of the First World War and doctors are seeing a lot of sick patients. For doctors like Constantine von Economo and Jean-René Cruchet, some new cases are catching their eye. A handful of cases have flu-like symptoms, headaches, fevers, fine, sure, but they're also extraordinarily sleepy. You could wake them up and they would rouse, but without any stimulation, they just go right back to sleep. Von Economo and Cruchet were the first to bring attention to this new illness, which ended up being called encephalitis lethargica, inflammation of the brain, leading to lethargy, sleepiness. Von Economo describes a couple of different types of encephalitis lethargica, but one of the most common types was called somnolent ophthalmoplegic. And the symptoms are really in the name. They would become progressively sleepier, and within a couple of weeks, the sleepiness would either resolve, or they would fall into a coma and eventually die. Interestingly, patients would also have eye-related findings. Patients would be looking off in different directions, they'd have double vision, maybe they'd have a droopy eyelid. So between about 1960 to 1930, doctors across the world really are noticing clusters of encephalitis lethargica, and hundreds of thousands of patients ended up being afflicted with this illness, and many of them actually died. Now, patients would definitely recover, but for some of them, this recovery was short-lived. In the months to years following that acute phase of the illness, the sleepiness, for example, they'd start to develop new psychiatric and neurological sequelae, new symptoms. These symptoms would be captured under the name of post-encephalitic, so post-inflammation, post-illness, Parkinsonism. They'd have symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease. Patients started to move more slowly, they became more rigid, they'd start to shuffle, even develop a tremor. While Parkinson's might be something that we see in older adults above the age of 50 to 60, now, after encephalitis lethargica, you'd be seeing these same kinds of symptoms in people who were 20, 30, even children. Alongside these more physical symptoms, you'd also have behavioral changes. Patients would become angry or more agitated, impulsive. They could even experience psychosis. Eventually, some of them even entered catatonia. The question on your mind might be, what caused encephalitis lethargica? How did people get so sick? Unfortunately, we still don't know. One idea is that it was caused by a virus, the influenza virus. After all, the cases of encephalitis lethargica became noticeable during the Spanish influenza, during this pandemic. But there wasn't really a clear association, and doctors could also find records of patients with similar kinds of symptoms dating back decades, centuries, before the onset of the so-called Spanish influenza. Theories about the origins of encephalitis lethargica still focus on bacterial or viral causes, but maybe this was some kind of post-infectious autoimmune disorder. It could also be related to other forms of encephalitis, like anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, as well as sleeping disorders like narcolepsy.